guys, Mrs. Pearson here. Welcome to math. All right, today's learning target is I can divide decimals. Remember, even though we can't interact and stop and ask questions, the benefit of being at home is you can hit pause and scroll back and you can uh, repeat anything that I've said that you want to hear as many times as you want. So feel free to do that. Um, another thing is as well, when I'm taking you through problems, if you want the challenge of trying it yourself before I show you how to do it, you can always hit pause and give it a shot and then come back and do it with me as well. Okay, so I can divide decimals. Um, our verb phrases can divide. We've been dividing whole numbers all year and decimals we've also been working with. So these should seem familiar. Our success criteria, our main thing that we have to be able to do in order to be successful with our learning target today is I can divide whole numbers. And I know for some of you, this has been a bit of a challenge. I'm gonna take you through the steps and then we're gonna have plenty of practice together. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do when we're gonna be dividing whole numbers is we have to set up that algorithm and we have to set it up correctly. The first number of your problem is always the one that's gonna go inside of that division house. So 545 divided by five should look like 545 inside divided by five. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through the steps of dividing with long division. You may have heard your teacher say, dad, mother, sister, brother as the order. So that would be divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. And I'm gonna bring you through those steps using this sample problem with whole numbers only. So our first uh, division would be five dividing into five. That will work, I can do that one time. Multiply, one times five would be five. Subtract, I have zero bring down the four, and remember you only bring down one digit at a time. It's very important that you're only bringing down one digit at a time. Five dividing into four, I cannot make a group of five if I only have four. So I'm going to place a zero over the four to show that four had a turn. Zero times five is zero. I subtract, I have four left over. Now I bring down that five. So now I have five into 45, that will go in nine times, I can make nine groups. 9 times 5 is 45, and I have no remainder. So again, divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. If you feel uh, that this is an area that you do need some practice, you are welcome to hit pause right now and copy down these steps. Um, I'm going to be taking you through them, but if you feel like you need to have them in your notebook, now would be a good time to hit pause and copy that down. All right, we're going to come over to our steps for today's learning target. I can divide decimals. I'm going to be taking you through these steps. I'm going to ask you to hit pause and copy them down in your notebook. Then I'll take you through and explain and we'll do some practice. So go ahead and hit pause and copy down those steps. Okay, welcome back. All right, we're going to be taking a look, setting up the algorithm. We're going to be putting the numbers inside of the house, like I said. The second step is we'll be placing that decimal before we start to divide. It's different than when we multiply decimals. When we multiply decimals, we ignored the decimal we did all of the multiplication and we placed the decimal last. Now it's the opposite. We're going to be placing that decimal before we divide and then we're done with it. We don't have to worry about it again. Uh, then we'll take, uh, we'll go through the division. Remember dad, mother, sister, brother. And finally, we're going to be checking to see if our answer is reasonable, which is very important when we're doing long division because there's so many steps where we can make an error. And if we place that decimal in the incorrect spot, checking for reasonableness will help us know that we made an error. Okay, so let's give this problem a try. First thing we need to do is set up the algorithm correctly. I'm gonna create my uh, division bar. The first number is what goes inside, so 31 and 5 tenths, divided by nine whole. Second step is to place the decimal, and you need to place it directly above where it is. Not in the back, not up here. You must place it directly above so it's in the same place value that it had been in the original problem, okay? Now we're ready for the division steps. Nine into three, it won't work. I can't make a group of nine if I only have three. Some people like to put an X, some people like to put a zero. It's up to you. So that won't work. Now let's try nine into 31. I can make three groups. Three times nine is 27. Subtract, I end up with four left over. I have a five that's still waiting for a turn. I need to bring down that five. Start the steps over. Nine dividing into 45. That will go five times. Notice I place my answer above the number whose turn it is. Five times nine is 45. Subtract, and I have no remainder. And the problems we're gonna be doing will have no remainder for now. Now I'm gonna check to see if it's reasonable. 
So I'm going to turn this into a multiplication problem. I'm going to multiply these two. And I'm saying that this would be my answer. So this is what I'm claiming. Let's turn these into whole numbers to see if it's reasonable. So 9 times 3, I'm just going to drop that decimal off. If you want, you can round it up to 4. But I'm just going to make it simple. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 is pretty close to 31 and a half. So I know my answer is in that reasonable range. Okay, let's try another one. Okay. Let's try 22 and 4 tenths divided by 4. Okay, again, if you want to practice it on your own, you're welcome to hit pause, give it a try, and then come back. I'm going to be taking us through it. So we need to set that up correctly. The first number is always the one that goes inside of the division house. Second step, place that decimal up immediately, directly above where it is, place value-wise. Four won't go into two. I can't make a group, but I can make a group out of 22. I could make five groups. Five times four is 20, so I would have two left over. Four is waiting for a turn. I need to bring that down. 4 into 24 would go 6 times. 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract, I have no remainder. Again, we're going to check for reasonability. I'm going to turn this into a multiplication problem. So this is what I'm claiming. That's what I got for my answer. Just turn them into whole numbers, nice and easy. So 4 times 5, I'm going to just drop off that decimal. 4 times 5 equals 20. And we can see that 20 and 22 and 4 tenths is pretty close, so my answer is reasonable. Okay? Doing okay? All right, let's do another one. And we'll have no remainder for right now. We're going to try 33 and 75 hundredths divided by 5. If you want, you can hit pause and try that on your own. Okay, I'm going to set up my algorithm, placing the first number inside the house. Place that decimal up first thing immediately right above where it is in the place value. 5 won't go into 3, but 5 into 33 will go 6 groups. 6 times 5 is 30. Subtract and I have 3 left over. 7 is waiting for his turn. 5 goes into 37 uh, 7 times. 7 times 5 is 35. Subtract I have 2 left over. I'm still waiting for a turn over here. 5 into 25, I can make 5 groups. Now let's check for reasonability. So I'm claiming that 5 times 6.75 would equal 33 and 75 hundredths. I turn those into whole numbers. 5 times 6 equals 30. And you can see 30 and 33 and 75 hundredths are pretty close. I'm going to give you one to try on your own. See how we're doing. You'll get no remainder on this problem. So if you are getting a remainder, then you know that you're making an error somewhere. So go ahead and hit pause and give that one a try. Okay, let's see how you did. So we place it inside the house, first number inside the house, 34 and 2 tenths divided by 6. Place your decimal up immediately. 6 won't go into 3, but 6 will go into 34. 5 groups. I have 4 left over. Bring down that 2. 6 into 42 is 7. 7 times 6 is 42. I have no remainder. And we can see the reasonability of that. 6 times 5 and 7 tenths equals 34 and 2 tenths. Turn it into whole numbers. Well, 6 times 5 would be 30, and I can see that that would be reasonable, okay? Now, you're not always going to get no remainder. We know that that wouldn't really be real life. So sometimes when you get a remainder, when you are dividing, you can try to get rid of it by adding a zero, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So if we have 1 and 6 tenths divided by 5, let's set it up, place our decimal, 5 won't go into 0, but 5 will go into 16 three times. Oh, I have one remainder. I've divided all my digits, nothing left. However, if I want to try to get rid of it, I can add a 0 here because 
one and six tenths is the same as one and sixty hundredths. I didn't change the value of the problem at all. So I can bring that zero down. Five will go into 10 twice, and I end up with no remainder. Sometimes that works. Sometimes you have to add two zeros. Sometimes you can keep adding zeros and it'll just keep going. So it just depends on the problem, okay? Let's try another one where we would have to add a zero. Two and 31 hundredths divided by six. Set that decimal up. Six won't go into two, but six will go into 23 about three times. Three times six is 18. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Bring down that one. Six into 51 about eight times. Eight times six is 48. Eight, nine, 10, 11. I have three left over, so I have a remainder. I've given everyone a turn. Let's see if we add a zero because that does not change the value of the problem. I'm allowed to do that because it's a decimal. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Six into 30, it does go in five whole times and I can get rid of my remainder. I'm gonna have you give one a try right now. You are gonna get a remainder and you will have to add in a zero, but give it a try. So go ahead and hit pause and then come back and we'll do it together. All right, let's see how you did. So we're gonna set that problem up. Let's put our decimal up. Two will go into three one time. Bring down our other three. Two will go into 13 six times. And there's my remainder. But let's try a zero. I can add a zero here because it does not change the value. Bring it down. And two goes into 10 five times. And there you go. Sometimes that's work, gonna work. There's one other scenario that does come up and that's repeating decimals. And I'm just gonna show it to you. You don't really have to worry about this for fifth grade and I didn't put any of these on the quiz, but I want you to know what to do or if you see it, I want you to be able to recognize what's happening. Sometimes you're gonna divide, you're gonna add that zero in and it's just gonna keep repeating and you're not expected to keep going, you'd be sitting there forever. So let me show you what might happen. So we're gonna set up our problem, place that decimal. Three won't go into two, but three will go into 22 six times. Four left over. Whoops. Made an error. Sorry about that. Seven times, seven times three is 21, there we go. All right, bring down that three. Three will go into 13 about four times. And there is my remainder. Let's try adding a zero. Bring it down. Okay, three into 10, yeah, three times. Same remainder. You could sit there all day adding zeros and it's gonna be three, 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 three. And that's, it's always gonna repeat. It's not gonna end no matter how many zeros you put. So this is what we use. It looks like this, our answer, we would write it as You'd only write one of the threes, that was the repeating. And then above it, you would put what's called a bar notation. And you would put a bar above it and that would be telling the person reading the problem that that was gonna repeat. And that again is called a bar notation. So I'm gonna let you try one of those. It's going to repeat and see uh, how you do. And this will be our last problem. So go ahead and hit pause. You will have to add a zero. You will get repeating, but let's just see how you do. Let's give it a try. So go ahead and hit pause and then come back. Okay, let's see how you did. This is pretty much as hard as it's gonna get. And don't panic, I didn't put any of this challenging on the quiz. Okay, the ones on the quiz for Thursday are all going to have no remainder. All right, so we're gonna place up our decimal. Three won't go into one, but three will go into 11 three times. We're gonna add a zero. Three into 20 would be six times. And you can see I'm gonna just keep getting that two as a remainder. So we would end with putting the bar notation above the six. Okay, all right, we're gonna end with our exit slip. If you'll come over here and give this a try.
This will have no remainder. This isn't one that you have to have a zero, and it's not one that's going to repeat. It's going to be very basic, no remainder. So 37 and 2 tenths divided by 4. Hit pause and then come back and I'll go over it with you. All right, let's see how you did. So we want to place uh, 37.2 inside the house, divided by 4, placing our decimal up. We should get 9 and 3 tenths. You should have no remainder. Uh, we want to check for reasonableness. So 4 times 9 and 3 tenths equaling 37.2. If I turn those into whole numbers, 4 times 9 is 36. And we can see 36 is pretty close to 37 and 2 tenths, so it would be a reasonable answer. If you found that you made a mistake, just check the work that I have and see where you are making your error. Are you making your error where you're placing your decimal? Are you making a division error? There's so many steps with long division that it's really easy to make one little tiny mistake and your whole answer uh, ends up being incorrect. So hang in there. We are going to practice our usual routine. We'll practice uh, Tuesday. We'll practice Wednesday. We'll have our quiz on Thursday. And again, I don't want you to feel stressed out about the repeating decimals or adding in the zero. I know that's another step if you like that challenge, but I did not place those on the quiz. And if you want to keep practicing, don't forget with dividing decimals, you can make up problems and then check it with your calculator. All right, best of luck and thanks for joining.